welcome to Boycott Israel. You have chosen wisely. Boycotting the Jewish nation is a great way to show your lack of support, and the only way to put a stop to their use of such underhanded methods as walls, checkpoints, and diplomacy to secure their borders. Of course, if you're going to boycott, you'll need to do it properly. Far too many have failed because they aren't enforced, they're declared illegal or inhumane, or because many Arab nations can't go into Fada without drinking Coca-Cola. But more often than not, they're simply not comprehensive enough. Past boycotts have only attacked companies. Sure, any company based in or doing business in Israel should be divested from, but there's more than that. The percentage of Israelis with PhDs is higher than in any other country, and these members of the Jewish intelligentsia produce more scientific publications per capita than any other nation, glutting the world with their scientific discoveries and inventions and propaganda. A truly effective boycott must attack these products as well. The following is a short list of do's and don'ts that will help ensure your day-to-day -day activities do not funnel money into the Israeli war machine. When buying a computer, be sure to buy one that does not have an Intel microchip or microprocessor, as these were invented in Israel. This includes all laptops made in the 20th century. Do not use a computer running the Windows NP, XP, or Vista operating systems developed by Microsoft Israel. Likewise, do not use the latest version of Microsoft Office. Once you've set up your Zion-free computer, be sure to disable all firewalls and virus protection software, which the IDF invented to stop freedom-fighting hackers. Do not use cell phones. These were invented in Israel, and with every call you make, the Jewish nation gets wealthier. If you absolutely must use cell phones, do not use the camera phone function, as the camera chip is also an Israeli invention. Likewise, do not use voicemail. Do not use AIM, ICQ, or any other instant messenger system, as four young Israelis invented them in 1996. Do not use Google, which runs on an Israeli-made search algorithm. Do not play Mastermind. If you're a farmer, do not use water-saving drip irrigation on your fields. Although water may be scarce in some areas, this technology was developed in Israel, and surely you can spare some water to bring down Zionism. Do not drive or support hybrid or electric cars, as Israel has invested millions into green technology, and is even considering installing an electric car grid over the entire nation. As an added bonus to driving inefficient vehicles, much of the extra money you'll be spending on gasoline will go to fund freedom fighters like Hezbollah and Al-Qaeda. Do not live in areas that get their electricity from solar power plants, as many of them were invented or even installed by Israelis. If you live in the Mojave Desert area of Southern California, you may want to consider moving. If you live in Turkey, do not eat fish, as Israeli-made UV filters have been used to decontaminate fish farms and ensure your meals are bacteria-free. If you live in a country afflicted by the 2006 Indian Ocean tsunami, you may have received free tsunami detectors from Israel. Contact your local government representative and ask that these devices be shut down and returned. If you are involved in street gangs, organized crime, or freedom-fighting groups yourself, do not use Uzis or Desert Eagles. There are plenty of American-made weapons easily available to aid in your elimination of the Jewish state and its inhabitants. However, note that the United States military receives much of its ammunition from Israeli warriors. Therefore, do not serve in the United States military. Don't let politically correct liberals fool you. The stereotype of the greedy and talented Jewish doctor is tried and true. Here are some ways to ensure that Israeli medicine men don't profit from healing your sickness. When receiving medication while hospitalized, make sure the doctor writes the prescription by hand on paper and that no computers are used to ensure proper administration of drugs. This system was designed by Israel, and the lives it saves are thus responsible for the suffering of hundreds of healthy Palestinians. Doctors, do not use Givun Imaging's swallowable camera pill to assist in getting gastrointestinal diseases diagnosed. Patients, do not swallow such a pill. Do not install baby sense monitors to prevent sudden infant death syndrome. Do not use the clear light method to treat acne. Soap and water will do just fine. Do not use the drug Copaxone to fight multiple sclerosis. Soap and water will do just fine. Women, please insist on using methods that require radiation for diagnosing breast cancer, as the fully computerized radiation-free alternative is an Israeli device. Doctors, do not inform your patients of the existence of this alternative. Do not donate money or blood at drives organized by a branch of the International Committee of the Red Cross. In 2006, they accepted Israel and Magen David Adom into their organization, despite the valiant efforts of the Red Crescent to prevent this over the years. If you develop a heart problem, insist that your medical practitioner not install cardiac stents to keep your blood flowing, or use a new device that helps to heart pump blood, or any other treatments, as many have been developed by Israelis, 
In fact, it may be preferable to eat right, exercise, and avoid smoking to ensure your heart will stay healthy and to ensure no Jews get a chance to profit from saving your life. If your children have heart conditions and you cannot afford surgery to save them, do not let Israeli charitable organizations like Sheva Dachim or Save a Child's Heart provide them with free medical treatment. Though they will fly your child to Israel and have cardiologists operate on him or her there, and though they offer this service to all children, including those in Arab nations and Palestine, you must be stronger. This is how they install Zionist propaganda in your hearts and minds that depict Israelis as humanitarian and caring, which you know is not true. Women, do not buy or wear seamless clothing, especially Victoria's Secret seamless lingerie. This is an Israeli patent. Men, do not let your spouses, wives, or daughters wear seamless garments. If they ask, let them know that their choice of clothing helps support the actions of the Jewish state. Also, do not let them use the epilady razor. Do buy conflict diamonds. Israel was the first nation to adopt the Kimberley process to ensure diamonds do not come from conflict regions. By buying blood diamonds, you are making a political statement against the actions of the Israeli government, as well as a fashion statement of looking stylish. Lastly, if you are a survivor of Hurricane Katrina, floods in Romania, the Southeast Asian tsunami, the war in Kosovo, famine in Ethiopia, and the earthquakes in Turkey, India, and El Salvador, or if you live in Sri Lanka or the Palestinian territories, you may be alive due to humanitarian aid from the Israeli government paid for by taxes on Israeli citizens or from the actions of Israeli charities like Brotherly Covenant, Latet, or Israel. Please kill yourself. Be sure to ask your local government representative about reducing your region's Zion footprint. Also, ask administrators at your local colleges and universities to cut ties with academics in Israel. For more information, look for one of the many anti-Israel sites on the internet or the hundreds of anti-Israel groups on Facebook. We hope you found the information in this guide useful and wish you good luck in your efforts to bring down the Jewish nation. It will not be an easy task. Israel has a firm ideological grip on the planet. They have convinced many that they are the victims, to the point that in the United States both Democrats and Republicans take pro-Israel stances. Fortunately, not everyone has been fooled. With the help of such powerful allies and boycott advocates as the Arab League, OPEC, the British Universities and Colleges Union, the Presbyterian Church, and Jimmy Carter, you too can put an end to the Israeli success story. After all, Israel is the hundredth smallest nation in the world, has no oil or precious resources, a terrible job market, and nearly all of their tax dollars are spent on military defense and humanitarian aid. They can't keep that up forever, and with the help of dedicated divestors such as yourself, perhaps one day the world can be free from Israel and go back to the way it was before.